So here's a bunch of lines and fittings I got for my um, to plumb in the, the coolant filter. Um, there's uh, so what, what I'm oh, this is uh, I got 20 feet of dash six uh, braided stainless line, and there's way more than I need to do just the uh, the filter. I only need about three or four feet, but I want to replace all my uh, fuel lines eventually as well. So I got a bunch of fittings, and I probably won't get till to this till spring. But I'd like to uh, replace all the fuel lines, all the uh, all the all the lines on the on the engine with uh, braided stainless line and uh, and fittings. How can you tell I'm an old hot rodder? Anyway, um, and I'm going to do all the all the brake lines, you know, all the air lines to the brakes and and all of all the valves and stuff in the in the spring as well. But I won't be using this kind of stuff for that. It'll be just uh, what's in there. <clears throat> but the uh, the engine, I'll try and dress up a little bit. Got to replace them anyways. This stuff isn't any more expensive than buying. Uh, just buying steel fittings from, from, uh, Arrow or from, uh, Weatherhead or whatever. So, might as well have some shiny. All right. So, today I am, uh, plumbing in the coolant filter. It's pretty tight in here. So, I don't know how much this I can actually film, but I'll try. I got it mounted on the bulkhead just forward of the or rear to the rear of the engine um, right just ahead of the crossover manifold here um, and I'm I've got the old fitting off I got the the first uh, fitting replaced there the AN fitting um, just ignore the wiring I'm until I have the other set of fans in here I'm not going to worry about uh, bundling all this wire up and everything but I will as soon as the as soon as the other fans are in and it's all wired and everything but in the meantime they're ordered but it's just a matter of till they get here uh, I'm wiring up this or plumbing up this uh, coolant filter so I'll show you how I'm going about doing that and it's just my personal preference, but I prefer to use straight-in fittings and then use full-flow 90s, 180s, whatever to, uh, to plumb, as opposed to, where'd the old fitting go? Um, I don't know what I did with it. Anyways, I, it had a... a a 90 there and then a straight fitting off of it um they're just a pain to get in and out like with that there to get that in and out if you had to you could stick a socket on it and tighten her up uh, you can't do that with a 90 and uh so anyways that's just my preference I mean, uh, you know it doesn't always work but when anytime you have the the uh the option to uh, put a straight fitting in and then you know use a a 90 or in this case I might use a, a 180 um, I find it just works a little a little nicer and um, anyways that's my story <laughs> and the next task here is to figure out the best routing for this um, a 180 won't won't work here it's too too tight these are it's the same housing as are used for the fuel filters so in can be either the top here or or this fitting here that's just or this opening here which is just plugged and then out are these ones here and the same thing on this end it's plugged this filter here has you know this is the in uh, fuel in here and then there's two fittings one here and one on the other end for uh, go into the engine um, but in this case I only need one so I will uh, I'm gonna go into the top 90 out of it and then I'll plug the front so um, 
yeah anyways that's what i'm going to do there and like as i said before one of these days when i get rich and famous i'll uh replace all these lines with braided line and braided stainless line and uh, en fittings um they're all fairly old and need to be replaced and by the time you price them all out AN fittings are look a lot better and they're they are uh, comparable in cost so that's what I'll do one of these days and what I like to do is put a fitting on one one end of the uh, the line and uh, put that into place and then put the other fitting I don't know if you can see it up in there but put the other fitting on and then just route your hose around the line around till you find the best route mark the line with a belt pen and go cut it Now there's the first line installed. Hope you can kind of see that up in there. <laughs> Not a lot of room, but fairly simple operation. I'll plug this opening that you can see there and the one on the front. Um, I'll just go off the other side up to the uh, up to the header tank. So that's what I'll do next. Okay, so next I guess I'll show you how to put these fittings together. Um, it's the same for any field serviceable GIC fitting. These are, inter well, they're, they're interchangeable, but they are, these are, and fittings are built to higher tolerances, tighter tolerances, I guess. Uh, but they will thread on. So here's the fittings I'm taking off. This is the old line that was on the, on the engine. And here's what I'm replacing it with. Um, they're both dash six uh, line, which is three eighths. And um, anyway, so <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll just kind of walk through the process of putting one of these fittings on for anybody that hasn't done it. I'm sure most of you probably have, but <laughs> for those that haven't, uh, I'll just show you the process. So what I do is I, I wrap it with uh, couple of wraps of uh, tape electrical tape works good and uh, then I just cut it with a zip disc so if you want to just hang on a second I'll do that all right so there it's cut so what you want to do you want to make sure you blow that out with uh, compressed air because it's going to um, trap little particles in there and you don't want that going through your system in this case it's going into a water system so it's not that critical but if it was oil or fuel or something like that you definitely want to make sure you get it all out but we'll blow it out anyways just to be just to be uh to be safe and then hang on a second what i like to do too is leave the tape on here um because you could take it off now and try and put your fitting on but the the, the tape's keeping it the the, uh, the stainless braid from from starting to unravel so uh, you want to uh, look and you, the other thing you want to do is make sure you make a nice straight cut now this looks like it may be a little bit at an angle but it's actually just the tape that's sticking out here so um, anyways you want to make sure you make a nice straight cut and clean the end out leave the tape on for now and uh, and then I'll show you the next step All right, so I got the fitting started on here and just kind of like that. It's just barely started. And then you can go ahead and take the tape off and that will keep everything from coming unfrayed on you. So I'll do that next, hang on. And I'm not gonna lie, getting that piece of tape out can be a pain sometimes. <clears throat> but it's better than stabbing yourself in the thumb with a piece of stainless steel wire and believe me that'll happen so it, it it will come out you just have to work at it and you know maybe put a pair of, use a pair of pliers i didn't have to in this case but sometimes you have to use a pair of pliers to just kind of pry it out you just have to make sure you don't pop that 
that nut off while you're while you're doing it, but it'll come. And then you want to push. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, hang on a second here. <coughs> so I guess my camera is just not going to focus in there. But you want to push the nut down, thread it down until. It doesn't quite, well, oh, that's not focusing at all, is it? Until it, it, it doesn't quite bottom. You don't want it to bottom on the nut. You want a little bit of clearance there. Um, but, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch away, maybe. Something like that. Then, what we want to do is take our nipple here, oil it, and start threading it in. And of course, as usual, I can't find my AN fittings or my fitting wrenches, so I had to order another set. They're not here yet. You can, but this works. You know, you don't want to do this if you're doing it every day. This isn't the way to do it, but for a one-time, one-time deal, it'll it works. Uh, you want to make sure you use a box end wrench so you minimize marring. Uh, open end wrench will just mar the heck out of the the aluminum. Um, in this case, they're both three quarter inch. So we want to put our wrench on here and start tightening and I can't do it with one hand. So I'll have to come back in a minute when it's done. Okay, there's a couple of things I forgot to mention. One thing you want to do is put a mark with your felt pen right here, which I forgot to do on this one, but I was holding it so you can tell whether it's backing out or not. So it's not the odd time it'll it'll start to push the hose out as you're trying to tighten it up. It doesn't happen very often, but if you put a felt pen mark there or make sure you're holding it here uh, so you can feel if it's moving as you thread that, uh, that nipple in, um, then you can make sure that uh, it's going to get together properly. Um, now the other thing you want to do is when you are... Come on, you can do it. Too much tension on it, I guess. <laughs> Hang on a second. It's a little stuck. All right. <laughs> got a little jammed in there. So anyways, what you want to do is, is run, it, run it in until you got a little bit of clearance there. You don't want to bottom it. Just leave just a tiny bit of clearance there. Just the thickness of a thumbnail, maybe. Um, and... Uh, Try and line up while well, you do. You have to. If you're using a box end wrench, you have to line up these two flats for it to slide off. If you have it, you know, part way through, you can't get it off. If you don't have a fitting on the other end, you can, you can't, you know, slide it through that way. But if you're, if you've already got a fitting on the other end, then these uh, these flats have to line up, and then you can just slide your wrench off. Anyways, and that's pretty much it. So we'll just go and install it now. Alright, let me see if I can get up in here now. So that's that line installed. I've got it, uh, I got a 45 on it, so I get it over toward that bulkhead and up away from everything. And then I will uh, clamp it along there, and then it goes up and up to that tank. So that's pretty much it. One coolant filter installed. So hope uh, hope this helps you somebody out. Uh, like I say, you don't have to be using AN fittings and, and braided stainless line. Works same uh, same process works for any old GI GIC line and and braided steel line. So hope that helps.